So uh, we are happy to to be a part of your your uh, learning journey. So as I mentioned that yeah, you people are uh, somehow the core or the face of uh, our company uh, to to our customer. So today we will learn something uh, uh, on basics of a crop nutrition because that is the core area you have been dealing and uh, the request raised by you guys during that. Uh, learning uh, exercise or uh, farm given. So uh, today's learning session or a structure is like uh, the most important thing is you need to know your role and uh, you need to be uh, something like on the same uh, platform. Everybody should be on the same platform that what is the role we are expecting or what is your role uh, as in something face of a company to the customer. And then once you, you understand your role efficiently or uh, 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 exactly, then you need to know your customer, that who is your customer and how, how something like, uh, what is his, his expectation and who all are you, your customer. And then uh, what are the enablers, the basic enablers, by who the, the enablers means the factors are the support to, by which you can ensure efficient delivery of your, your assigned role. And after learn means getting uh, after uh, knowing our role, knowing the customer, and knowing the enablers, we will move towards the farming. We'll we'll know that the farming because that is somehow the basic uh, uh, premises around our whole uh, business and everything. If the farming is not there, we'll not have uh, this business. Okay. Then we'll learn on some of the concept because the crop nutrition, if we talk about within uh, So if we talk about the farming, within a farming, we are specifically dealing on a crop nutrition, plant nutrition. So somehow sorry for the disturbance, but somehow people are coming in our, our waiting room. So we will learn on the concept of essential plant nutrients. So after learning the concept of essential plant nutrient, we will go uh, to learn more about, about uh, plant nutrients. First, we will learn on the concepts and then second, we will learn on, on what are the plant nutrients and then functions of all those essential plant nutrients and followed by that, we will go for a deficiencies and disorder of these nutrients in crop and the final will be your Fertilizer. So fertilizer, most of you guys are very, very familiar to that. So I'll just try to cover a little bit on, on that part. So later on we can uh, uh, go for a detailed learning on the fertilizer. So uh, let's begin. First, you we need to know that what is your role? So if we see you are associated with the customer, the farmer and grower, because our customer is the end consumer is the farmer or a grower. So you are serving them, then you are serving to retailer and dealer, and then you are also uh, serving this, our company, okay? So if we see about uh, this grower, what is something like your role as a, as a, as a uh, when, when you deal with the grower? So uh, you are the face for the company, the Indorama. So whatever the message or whatever the communication is going from you is, is somehow is, is considered to be that this communication is coming from, from uh, Indorama company. So whenever you are dealing with your customer or your, uh, the farmer, so you need to be very clear that your communication should not be uh, any such type of a communication which is not given by the company. So you, you are the face, so you need to maintain that type of a communication which is being given by uh, the company. And if you are not clear, you need to discuss, you need to ask again and again with your, your seniors and only communicate what is the intent of company. So there should not be any misunderstanding between you and the grower, which we need to avoid. Generally that is happening with, uh, whenever they, that type of a role anybody is playing, then this is the most common problem. The grower 
for a grower you are the source of knowledge if you want any any knowledge or any information around the farming around the product or about anything so he is considering you as a basic source of knowledge so you need to be a, uh, enhanced or you need to up regularly update your knowledge so you should not communicate or you know, you should not share any such knowledge which is not uh, means appropriate or optimal if you don't know then don't try to give any any wrong suggestion or a no, wrong uh, answers for the farmer's question it is better to ask a question to your your uh, colleagues seniors or anybody else or maybe you can you can find out on the, on the secondary platform like a google but yeah try to avoid any information or any knowledge which you are not sure of uh, transferring to the grower or farmer then he is also looking you for a solution provider not only with his crop maybe his 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 maybe crop is something his crop is so uh, the grower farmer is looking you as a solution provider uh, for all of his problem not only related to, to to agriculture but yeah as you have uh, some deliverables so you need to concentrate on any any solution he is seeking for uh, for a uh, uh, crop production or uh, related to farming you should have to focus on that but yeah when, as and when you have sufficient time you have you can take up and address other other problems and provide the solution for that grower and then once we come to retailer or a dealer what what, what retailer or a dealer expecting from you or what is your role what what should be your role with your dealer or distributor or retailers so he is considering you as extended support system because he cannot support uh, or address uh, all the customer associated with him so he is looking you that you should support him for ensuring a effective delivery of his produce as well as his uh, any any of the something uh, queries of farmer so he is looking for a support from your side for addressing all of the problem for the customers so if i talk about you are the bridge between a uh, retailer as well as the farmer the end customer so you need to uh, work as a bridge between these two you have to match or you have to adjust the requirement of a both and try to satisfy both the ends of the bridge for ensuring the effective delivery and he's also looking you as an a facilitator as and when he he want some support from your side so you need to be ready or always available for his uh, support and facilitating him to achieving any task so if we talk about a uh, uh, company what company is looking for so uh, so what indorama uh, your role for the indorama as a company what is your role you are the person who is going to generate information uh, for creating all those uh, is long term strategy and short term strategy and if require any information for planning or or uh, executing any activity like we are uh, now working on this uh, food distribution uh, for a covid 19 so these type of uh, information generation and a data info means collection and uh, means every day i used to see that that uh, uh, weather update on that group so that is your your responsibility or role for the company and then you need to be a active executor so whatever the activities are there planned for from the company they have a certain objective so you need to understand that objective and try to deliver your your uh, those activity to fulfill that uh, uh, objective of that activity so it is very important whenever you are going to execute any activity or assigned by anybody uh, any uh, any of our uh, family member uh, if i talk about the family family is a indorama family all include the management and and uh, uh, the retailer also so whenever you are going to execute any activity it is required to understand that what is basic purpose of that activity and what the company is expecting to achieve out of that that uh, activity so your your effort should be to understand that objective and deliver that activity and execute that activity to fulfill that objective 
and then again you are the person who is a linkage between uh, all all the three stakeholders one is the company one is the even even you are also a stakeholder or entity in that family so you are working as a linkage bridge between all the different stakeholders so your role is really important to effectively deliver the the, the uh, it means uh, purpose of the company as well as expand contribute for the expanding the business of company <clears throat> so after knowing your role now it is important to know what's the farm expectation from you so uh, if we talk about the farmer what is expecting from you the technical knowledge on a crop production so if i talk about the technical knowledge on the crop production he is good on doing the farming he is doing his, his practices as as he learned from his uh, ancestors so your role is to provide the right information which helps them to ensure better return so like which crop is good for growing that that a particular area what is something like a variety which is performing uh, in that particular area and what is the market demand and he should plant his his uh, crop as he should plant his crop as per the market demand but if i see the data around 70% of of uh, farmers or uh, growers in nigeria they are they are majorly doing subsistence subsistence farming so only a uh, little little share of this farmers having a marketable surplus but as a something person who is going to deal with that you need to fulfill his expectation in terms of uh, what crop what uh, variety what is the time of sowing so all these technical knowledge for the crop production you need the farmers is expecting from you though sometime he is going to validate his existing knowledge so you need to be clever enough to understand his expectation and respond accordingly so uh, next is he is also looking in product information his expectation from you is that you should be able to share with him all the product information or a product uh, knowledge and these products are sometimes agri input it is not something restricted you should only talk about your urea you need to be uh, something like fulfill his uh, expectation of getting a knowledge about the seed about the pesticide about the 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 market and uh, about the fertilizers not only with the urea other other products also whatever he want to use you should be able to share that that uh, product information with him if you are capable enough then definitely he is going to rely on you and he is going to follow your your instructions and then apart from agri input you have to have a knowledge around uh, agriculture output agriculture output is basically whatever the produce coming out of his field he, how he can get a better quality and how he can realize a better better price and maybe sometime post harvest also how he can uh, store his produce and how can he he he, he just uh, keep his his grain or whatever he is producing safe so uh, his expectation from you is sometime he is struggling with something like during his crop production he is struggling with some issue but he is not able to identify that what is the basic basic issue that he is not able to get get the productivity or he is not able to get the crop as per his expectation so he is expecting from you to identify those those hidden kind of a issues or a problem and provide a solution for that and then if any farmer is having a marketable surplus if you could uh, find out a market linkage then he is going to be a something like uh, uh, always following your instruction and will be behind you for for your guidance though it is not your core responsibility finding a market linkage and other things but yeah it is something out of your uh, so uh, that is something kind of a wow kind of a factor you can create uh, for farmers expectation so ultimately in a nutshell if i talk about you are the person with whom he he is expecting that you are going to contribute for ensuring better return better unit return from his farm that's the thing he is looking from you so that's the expectation of your customer the farmer so you need to be uh, something focus yourself to 
fulfill this expectation. Let's move to the next section. So we talked about uh, the, the role, your role. What is something like expectation if you're a customer? Now, the next thing is what are those factor which enables you to a delivering efficient uh, role or your, your assigned responsibility? <coughs> so the first utmost important thing is your technical knowledge. If you are really good at your technical knowledge about the farming, about the product, about the agri tools, about the, the pest, then definitely it is going to be an enabler for ensuring efficient delivery of your role and responsibility. The second thing is a social connect. Uh, knowledge is one thing that you can acquire from anywhere. Apart from the knowledge, you need to be uh, well connected in the area where you are operating. Say, for example, you are operating an agri uh, domain, you should be connected with the people who are dealing in, in agriculture, like the, the people who are dealing in the seed, the people who are dealing in a pesticide, people who are dealing in something like commodity training, trading. So you need to be uh, well connected with those guys for uh, facilitating your, your farmers. So the, this, if you are good connected, with these type of people or the, uh, the, the people who are operating in this uh, uh, geography or in area, then definitely you are going to uh, have a better response or a better uh, efficient delivery of your role. And you need to continuously interacting with your customer as well as your, uh, uh, your, your all the stakeholders like uh, dealer, social context, as well as the company representatives. So, so you need to be a continuously interacting with, the, with them because the interaction is always ensuring your bondage with, with, with the person or with the, with, with the different uh, stakeholders. You also need to provide a timely solution because timely solution is, is only gives you an efficient uh, identity. If your uh, solution delivery is not on time, then there is a no role of not the, you are not going to the benefits of that, that solution. So you need to be uh, very prompt on any issues or any solution if, if the farmer or any of your stakeholder, be a, a, a company person, be a retailer, be a farmer, whoever is looking for a solution for anything, you need to be uh, prompt enough to ensure a timely uh, delivery of the solution. So you need to be, a, the, the another enabler is, another enabler is the tool and machine. So if you, you have efficient tools with you, then definitely your uh, delivery of your role is become a much easier. So if I'm talking about the tools, so tools may be like, like a, a laptop, like a, a mobile phone, like a, something of your, your uh, connectivities. So all these things become enabler for your uh, delivery of uh, role. Last but not least, the management support is also one of the enablers. So, so if your, your management or a company, top management is supporting you to deliver your role, then yeah, definitely you will be delivering your, your uh, role efficiently. Now, so far we learned that what is your role? Who all are your, your customer? And what is your uh, customer's expectation? And what are the enablers for ensuring effective delivery? So let's let's move towards uh, the farming. So what is farming? So every, different different person have a different uh, definition of a farming. Everybody uh, perception on what is farming is different. So everybody will will frame uh, the farming in a different way. He he will he or she will see in a different prospect the farming, but in a nutshell, if we talk about the farming is a process of converting seed to grain or seed to seed. So that is, that is farming because that is the process ultimately, whatever the def definition so far you, you studied, but ultimate the input and output is that only that seed is being placed inside the soil and it is either giving you a grain or seed. 
So we need to understand that what is the difference between a seed and a grain. So very simple difference is the seed is for growing your next crop and the grain is for a consumption as a food. So that is a simple definition. But if you go a little technical, so seed is having better genetical potential for producing a crop as compared to seed. Seed genetical potential is not maintained because that when you, you go for a converting seed to seed, then you have to follow a different standard of a farming. <coughs> but if you want to go for a seed to grain, then you have to follow a different, different kind of a package and practices. So a process of converting seed to grain or seed to seed is farming. And what are those requirements? What are the resources required for, for uh, doing a farming? So yeah, land, soil, water, air, light. And then yeah, obviously a person who is managing all these things, the grower and farmer, then agri inputs, agri tools like uh, all the plowing, uh, harvesting, all those tools, and then growing know-how. And now, the most important thing, where is your role? If we talk about <coughs> your role comes in agri inputs, agriculture tools, and growing know-how. Why I'm talking about, why, why I'm telling that your role is in agri agriculture tool also, that because it is a holistic kind of operation. So if you will uh, address all these, these uh, different factors of, of uh, farming, different components of farming, then the chances of a success is, is higher as compared to when you take up only one. If we talk about your specific role is coming under agri input and that too is within agri input is for the fertilizers, crop nutrition part. So, uh, so we understand what is farming and what are the factors, uh, what are the resources required for, for that farming. Now, we'll move to, to the core area, that concept of essential plant nutrients, because the plant nutrition is the, is the next, next area where we need to uh, uh, learn more about. So uh, let's understand different concepts of essential nutrients, and then we'll just understand what is plant essential nutrients, and then we'll understand different uh, role of a different plant nutrients. So the first concept is a criteria of essentiality. So if we talk about how these, these nutrients are considered, because I think we all know that 16, uh, there are 16 essential plant nutrients, which are uh, means assigned as an essential plant nutrient. So there are scientists, uh, uh, Arnon and Estrot, who has given these criteria. So these criteria are that means only we will consider those nutrient as an essential if in absence of that plant nutrient, a specific plant nutrient, the plant is unable to complete its life cycle. So suppose nitrogen is one of the essential plant nutrient. So if nitrogen is missing, I'm talking about the missing, absent, it means there, uh, if absent means absent, no particle of a nitrogen is inside the soil. So in that type of a soil, any plant will not able to complete its life cycle. And that's how this nitrogen is considered as an essential plant nutrient. And the second criteria of considering the plant nutrient as an essential is the role of that particular nutrient is specific and it cannot be substituted by any other plant nutrients. Like, if we take a, a role of this sulfur, so sulfur major role is, is in production of amino acid, and finally it is helping in, in, how, uh, in, in oil production. So if nitrogen can substitute this work or this function of a sulfur, nitrogen can help in, in uh, in, in uh, production of uh, oil, then sulfur cannot be considered as a essential plant nutrient. So the first criteria is, the first criteria is without, in absence of that particular uh, plant nutrient, plant cannot complete this, uh, its life cycle. 
The second is the role of that particular nutrient is specific and that cannot be substituted by any other uh, plant nutrient, then only it will be considering as an essential plant nutrient. The third is the element, the element must be shown in a direct involvement in nutrition of a plant. So it should not be a something like kind of a uh, indirect uh, involvements in a plant nutrition. So if any plant nutrient fulfilling all these three criteria, then only we can consider as that nutrient as an essential plant nutrient. So far, till date, only 16 elements are qualifying under this, this criteria of essentiality and they are considered essential for the plant nutrition, plant growth and development. <laughs> so let's understand the second concept, law of minimum. I think uh, most of the guys, they have seen this uh, picture on, on Google also and my survey also. Uh, so uh, let's understand what is this law of minimum. If you see this, this picture, this, this barrel, so you can see there is something, pieces of, of uh, wood is coming together for farming the complete barrel. If we consider that one piece of this wood is as an, a one essential uh, factor or essential nutrient for, for that plant growth, then we need to maintain sufficient level of all the factors responsible for plant development and growth. And if you see the yield, is draining out from the area where the height of that particular strip or a wood or uh, the section is lower. So we need to maintain the sufficient level of each and every uh, factors or uh, the, the factor responsible for crop growth and development, then only we can get the maximum productivity or a yield. So the yield or a productivity of any crop is being governed by the nutrient or the factor which is present in limited or a minimum quantity. So if we talk about the nutrition part, so all, in all the 16 nutrients, if all 15, except one, 15 elements are uh, present in a sufficient quantity, even if they are higher also, but only one is in deficient. So your productivity, that particular nutrient is going to decide your, your productivity. So despite you put your best effort, all somehow or whatever you want to add, all those things after doing those efforts, only you will get the productivity determined by the least available factor. So growth is dictated not by total resource available, but by the scarcest or a minimum resource available for your crop growth. So that's the law of uh, minimum, which is given by Libix. So let's move forward. So the next concept, the hidden hunger, the hunger that too is a hidden. So if we talk about, about uh, plant development and a growth or the complete physiology of, of your plant, so there is a different stages. One stage, one stage where all the resources are in optimum stage. That is the one extreme. The another extreme is the resources are deficient. So one extreme where the optimum resources are available for plant development, then definitely you are going to get a top uh, and optimum productivity. 
but other side if there is a deficiency symptom then definitely you have to identify that deficiency symptom and immediately you have to go for <coughs> overcoming that deficiency but in between there is a hidden hunger because this process is not something kind of a, a switch on switch off, switch off button kind of a process from sufficiency to, uh, sufficiency to deficiency so it start from sufficiency to move toward a hidden hunger and from hidden hunger it reaches to a, a stage of a stage of sim showing symptoms but if you wait until the symptom appears on your crop till that time the damage is being means significant damage in your crop productivity is already done because uh, this during this hidden hunger this is this transition phase from uh, optimum to uh, deficient the plant is started struggling so as in something good agronomist as in something like uh, active person uh, of a field uh, crop and all you need to ensure the optimum level you should not wait till the deficiency symptom appears because once the deficiency symptom appears then the damage is already being done so and that is again that is a irreversible damage it is not that you can reverse it is a irreversible damage so you are going to lose your productivity so what effort you should put you should put your effort that the management your management practices or a farmer's management practices should be such that it should not go towards this they should be here but even if you go beyond also it is again going to give you a uh, something like a uh, loss because that is not economically uh, optimal level because using excess fertilizer also is a harmful so the best effort is you have to maintain your your management practices to ensure sufficiency level for your crop so uh, now how to use this these different concepts because concepts are always available but how to use these concepts so one i i said that the essentiality uh, criteria of essentiality second we talk about law of minimal and third we talk about the hidden hunger so these concepts are concepts where you can use these concept for promoting the concept of balanced fertilization fertilizer application but balance fertilizer application yeah i agree that your role is promoting your urea only but you have to tell the farmer you can do a exercise maybe you can uh, demonstrate the farmer by using if we talk about this how how you can demonstrate this to your farmer you take a paper bag simple paper bag and put these type of a uh, strips on on that paper bag and put to the name of all those 16 elements and you just cut one nutrient at a lower level and ask your farmer to fill the grain and then ask then see the result what is the result once the farmer will start filling that uh, the paper bag which is cut at the something lower level then his grains are going to overflow from this cut and easily you can convince your grower that okay this is the case which is happening in case of your crop productivity if you are not following the complete balanced fertilizer application and optimal use of your resources then this is going to happen despite of your best effort you cannot prevent this this uh, uh, drain drain out draining out of your productivity which is in the form of in your experiment or your your uh, demonstration it is going to be in the form of a grain or maybe you can use a urea also so uh, so this is the the concept you can use to to tell your growers that yeah we are here to to sell our urea but no we are not saying that use only urea you should use the balanced fertilizer then only my urea is going to give you the appropriate result otherwise means 
this this is going to happen that that drain the productivity drain is going to happen then if we talk about the other concept the hidden hunger so efficient ensure timely fertilizer application so if you are doing any delay in application then definitely that that particular crop nutrient or that resource is going to be in in minimal and that is going to determine your your productivity so that's that gives you an indication that yeah we have to use your your fertilizer uh, on our right time and at the right uh, place so next we 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 reach to the plant nutrients which is somehow the basics for all of us that we are dealing around this plant nutrients so as i mentioned earlier also that there are 16 essential plant nutrient but what is something plant nutrient a group of raw material like we eat food we not only eat only a single maybe uh, if if you consume your food uh, if you serve with only a, somehow uh, one dish i don't know what the common dish but in our area it is something like a chapati and rice well we can tell us that what is something like a specific uh, this is common in nigeria and he can if they only serve a one dish like i i remember that uh, beans plus uh, maize if only maize is supplied then how do you feel yeah, here yeah. normal foods are gari, fufu, and uh, some of the yam, cassava boiled or roasted, pounded. So, so many varieties of foods, they, they, they're very rich when it comes to the food variety and uh, availability of foods. Yeah, that's how I'm saying. If, if that is restricted to only one, then how you can do that? So, it is a group of uh, raw material essential for ensuring plant growth. That is known as plant nutrients and within that nutrient see uh, apart from this essential plant nutrient with the criteria of all those three criteria which fulfill that plants uh, as an essential plant nutrient there are some nutrient which is not essential but they also to take a part in in crop production and development but they are not mm, coming under the criteria of uh, essential plant nutrients but come again, coming back to these plant nutrients, we have a 16 so far qualified essential plant nutrient. And if we see, we can classify, we can divide these, these nutrients into different subcategories, subgroups based on amount required, means the quantity of that particular uh, nutrient required for a plant growth. Based on that, we can classify these essential plant nutrients. And then we can also uh, classify based on their mobility in, in soil and we soil and plant. Then there is a chemical nature also. We can classify those complete uh, 16 elements uh, uh, based on their chemical nature and then there is also each and every nutrient is having their different function in inside the plant. So we can classify that into uh, different categories based on fun functions in plants. So let's try to understand this classification further. So based on amount required and chemical nature. So first we'll take up that uh, amount required. Uh, the nutrients which required in a higher quantity that comes uh, as a basic uh, nutrient. So if we talk about a basic nutrient, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, which contribute 96% of a total dry weight of your, your crop. So just try to imagine, we are doing everything for ensuring that 4%. Are you getting? Only 4% is, is the air dry weight for which we are dealing all these fertilizers, we are doing all those practices. Otherwise, this CHO is constituting 96% of the dry weight. Then, the second category is macronutrient, which is required in relatively higher quantity. And the last is micronutrient, which required in lesser quantity. Within micronutrient, there are some nutrient which are a primary like uh, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. If you link it, uh, these are the primary nutrients. So uh, straight fertilizers, 
if you just see the definition of a state fertilizer, it is going to come there, primary nutrients. And then secondary nutrients are calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. And the micronutrients are iron, zinc, copper, boron, molybdenum, and chlorine. So I want to caution you again. If you go back to your concept, the uh, law, law of minimum or a barrel law, then again, though these nutrients are required in less quantity, but they are equally important as the basic nutrients are important. So there is nothing like, so these micronutrients, though they are required in a less quantity, but they are equally important. So next classification is based on chemical nature. So some of them are cations, some of them are anions, some of them are metals, and some of them are non-metals. So if we go for this, so here again, non-metallic form is CHO, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Even the potassium is in alkali nature, and then even non-metal is a sulfur also. Alkaline material is calcium and manganese. Alkaline means the pH more than seven. And the transition metals are uh, iron, manganese, zinc, copper, molybdenum. So this is basically the classification based on amount and chemical nature of the uh, 16 essential plant nutrients. So let's move to next uh, classification. Mobile in mobility in soil. So all those 16 elements, they are, see how, I'll just come in, in a different way. So how these, these nutrients are being absorbed by the plant? So the question is how to absorb, means these nutrients is being absorbed by the plant root. So there are two, two options. Either the root should go to that particular nutrient or the nutrient should move to, to, to the root. But in most of the cases, this active and passive absorption of a nutrient, the nutrient moves towards, because this nutrient is available in the form of a solution, and it's moved towards uh, the root based on the concentration of a nutrient. The, the always from a higher concentration to lower concentration, it will move, and based on that, the so means roots are absorbing these nutrients. So, like nitrate, sulfate, borate, chlorine and manganese. These are a highly mobile uh, nutrient in plant, sorry, in soil. So what is something like how, yeah, it is something, yeah, I, I also read that. But how do you link this to uses of your, your uh, daily or uh, delivering your um, roles? See, if the nutrient is highly mobile in soil, then you have to take a precaution. You have to design your fertilizer uh, in such a way that uh, there should not be a higher quantity of these mobile nutrient at any point of time. Because if that is available in higher quantity, then the chances of losses is higher like in case of a nitrate, because if you see this nitrate and ammonia, both are coming from hydrolysis of your urea. I'll take up that as an something end of this presentation. I'll tell you that how this urea hydrolyzes and the, that become from Mi2 available form. So Mi2 nitrate and Mi2 ammonium, ammonia, these NH4, both are outcome or a, a product of intermediary product or end product of urea hydrolysis. So nitrate is highly mobile and if it is present in excess, there is a certain that you are going to lose that nitrate as a leaching loss. And same is for a sulfate, boron, chlorine and amine. So whatever is something highly mobile nutrient, so you have to plan your fertilizer application in different split doses. Like you, you apply your urea in a different split doses. That is the reason why we use this urea in a split doses. 
And the second, like other nutrients like boron, chlorine, MN, and sulfate, we need to know that at what stage they are required. Generally, what we used to do, we uh, apply as a basal dose. But we have to understand at which stage of crop growth these essential nutrients are required and try to uh, schedule your fertilizer application accordingly. Then we come to less mobile. If it is a less mobile, it is okay. Whether you are uh, applying as a basal dose or as in something kind of a top dressing. So it is relatively, uh, losses are always less. So you need not to worry much on that part. So these are something kind of a, a nutrient. The less mobile nutrients are the safest one. So uh, for a in, in, in terms of planning your fertilizer uh, scheduling or a fertilizer application. So these are relatively, uh, easy to manage kind of a nutrient, then comes to immobile. So if we know uh, this uh, phosphate is almost immobile in soil. So suppose, and that is the reason the phosphatic fertilizers always advise to apply as a basal dose because wherever these fertilizers are going to place in soil, say for example, you, you apply the fertilizer and that fertilizer reaches on X place, it is the laziest one, it will not at all move any, anywhere, so it will be just something idly uh, staying at the same place. So phosphate is the laziest one and followed by zinc. So application of these immobile nutrient need to be at means as close to as as your root zone so these fertilizers need to be applied as a maybe a basal placement or below the rows or as close to your your plant root so these are the something classification based on plant mobility in soil the next comes mobility essence, mobility of essential plant nutrient inside the plant. First, we talk about this mobility in soil. And this I'm talking about, so, so, so the complete process is the fertilizer is there. The moment you apply the fertilizer in field, the concept of mobility in soil will come in uh, place, come in action, and then the next is mobility in plant. So how that is? After that comes after absorption of uh, plant nutrient inside the plant. The, once the root absorb these nutrients, then the mobility of uh, these essential plant nutrient inside the plant comes in picture. So there are some nutrients which are highly mobile in, 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 in uh, plants like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. They are really highly mobile. So what is something kind of a, uh, a correlation of these highly mobile nutrient in plant? So if the mobility, if you know that these are the three, four uh, nutrient, which is a highly mobile inside the plant, then yeah, the moment root absorb, it will reach to the apical part of that crop. So the deficiency, the chances of that deficiency symptom is always on the lower side of the leaf lower leaves the older leaves so based on that if the symptom of deficiency is somewhere on the lower side of the leaf then definitely these are the three four nutrients which is responsible for causing that again the moderately mobile this can be happen means the deficiency symptom can happen anywhere less mobile uh, yeah again it is somewhere new and older leaf immobile so if it is an immobile is again, uh, uh, as compared to uh, soil, the phosphatic fertilizers, they were the laziest. So these are something kind of a laziest in, inside the plant, uh, uh, inside the plant uh, body. So these are the laziest. The moment root absorbs, they will settle down near to root or maybe just little up to, to the root or just lower canopy. So most of the deficiency symptom appears on the apical part of the plant. So uh, 
I, I considered this, I've already uh, means discussed this, that is how to use these things while designing or validating fertilizer recommendation, how to use this information. So if we talk about these, this fertilizer classification and all, so how to design means you have to be uh, using that information. Okay, these are the micro one, these are the minor, um, major uh, nutrient and these are the minor nutrients so based on that you have to design your fertilizer recommendation and also you can validate if somebody farmer is coming to you with, with some fertilizer recommendation so based on those nutrient requirement or based on the recommendation you can use this information to validate those fertilizer recommendation deciding fertilizer application time like I, I shared with you, if it is a highly mobile, then you go for a split application. If it is a least mobile, then you can go for a one basal application also. Then fertilizer application method is also, this, this information can be used for deciding fertilizer application method. Like if the immobile nutrient is, then you have to do a point placement or a row placement of that fertilizer. But if it is a mobile, then even you can go for a broadcasting method also, assigning fertilizer, assisting fertilizer use efficiency also. So fertilizer use efficiency is, I think, uh, is a very, very critical and crucial for uh, everybody to understand. So it is uh, somehow if uh, efficiency of the applied fertilizer for pro ensuring productivity of your crop. So uh, suppose a farmer is using nitrogen as a basal dose, then definitely there is a, there is a high risk that the fertilizer use efficiency of that fertilizer is going to be lower. So you can assess by asking all these uh, questions that when you applied your nitrogenous fertilizer, if it is a basal dose, then definitely uh, the efficiency. So suppose it is something uh, applied as a basal, then definitely the average uh, fertilizer use efficiency is between 30 to 50 for the nitrogen. But in case if he's applying as a single dose of a nitrogen as a basal, then definitely this, that will go further down. So you can assess that fertilizer use efficiency by, uh, by using this knowledge. Identification of a deficiency symptom, yeah. If it is a mobile inside the plant, so uh, the nutrient is mobile inside the plant, so where should be the deficiency of these nutrients? So that type of uh, uses of this information you can <coughs> use and ensure delivery of your, your uh, responsibility and role. So let's move towards uh, what are the functions of these essential plant nutrients. So I think most of the guys are aware about, about this, uh, uh, what is the role, but what I'll do, I'll just take you through around, uh, on, on this, what is the role, because we are already exceeded our time. So nitrogen is basically is a bodybuilding material. So nitrogen is essentially used for, for cell division and plant growth or a vegetative growth. If, it, if there is a requirement for a vegetative growth, then you should go for application of a nitrogen. It is directly involved in a photosynthesis, aids in a production and use of a carbohydrate after energy reduction in the plant. So, but one thing is a very important here, I want to just share with you. Uh, it is uh, related to orchard crop. The CN ratio, carbon nitrogen ratio, is really, really uh, crucial <coughs> for ensuring fruit bearing. If <coughs> the CN ratio is higher, then there is a higher chances of, uh, of that, that plant is going to bear the fruit. If the CN ratio is lower, means the nitrogen is higher, carbon is lower, then the chances of a bearing fruit is less. There will be a continuous uh, vegetative growth. So you need to maintain while, while designing or application of a nitrogen, you need to maintain the uh, proper CN ratio. The phosphorus, the next nutrient is the phosphorus. So phosphorus, we, we all know that this helps in a root development. So the utmost important uh, role of this phosphorus is to develop uh, plant root. That's how it is required at the initial stage. Phosphorus is always required at the initial stage. So uh, very little uh, information is available when we apply this phosphorus as a top dressing uh, fertilizer. And it also helps in storing uh, the, the food and it improves the quality of a fruit and vegetable. It's a 
vital for a seed seed formation helps in a survival a harsh winter condition if phosphorus level is a higher then there is a <coughs> good resistance in the plant for against this winter though all, all these these uh, things are available with you so i'll just go with with potassium the next uh, chemical is uh, essential nutrient is the potassium which is a uh, well known for uh, uh, ensuring the disease resistance as well as the resistance again the the scarcity of a water or a drought resistance it is also known as somehow uh, it is acting as a, a truck means it, it transport the food material the synthesis the photosynthetic uh, uh, synthate the food manufactured by the plants or a leaf it potash work as a something like a truck for transmitting transporting that, that food from one place to another place the calcium is really important for making the cell division and involved in a nitrogen metabolism uh, and one more thing for uh, about the potash is that this is uh, responsible for opening and closing of stomata also so how much water is going to uh, transpire from the leaf it depends on the potassium the content of potassium if it is a higher then there the mechanism of closing the stomata is faster then followed by the calcium which is uh, really required for a cell division and essential for something like a fruit setting and stimulate a microbial activity reduce, reduce a plant respiration why why this is important to reducing a plant respiration because the respiration uh, now yeah i i want to just share with you all uh, one thing how this productivity is defined so productivity is defined means the balance between photosynthate and respiration so if the re rate of respiration is higher means it is utilizing the photosynthate so the chances of stored food in that plant is less so there is a something kind of a, a role between respiration and photosynthesis if photosynthesis activity is a higher then only you are going to get a higher uh, net assimilate if the respiration and photosynthesis is equal there will be a zero net assimilate so food storage is going to be a zero and if something respiration is less photosynthesis is a higher then the stored food is going to be higher inside the plant so let's move for a next one manganese manganese is is integral the in the center molecule of that chlorophyll is a manganese so magnesium so mg is is somehow the central uh, component of chlorophyll improve utility utilization of a mobility of phosphorus it helps in in, in mobilization of a phosphorus activator and component of many plant in the increase iron utilization so it is uh, doing somehow uh, support for iron utilization so the next is uh, iron iron is again supporting in in uh, uh, chlorophyll synthesis and it takes oxygen from uh, plant one part to other part manganese is function as a part of a certain enzyme so it promotes the enzymatic activity increase the availability of calcium and phosphorus zinc adds a plant growth hormones and enzymatic in zinc is a, a element which is is highly involved in enzymatic activities also necessary for a carbohydrate formation so zinc is responsible for <coughs> formation of a plant food sulfur and even one more thing is sulfur uh, for a sulfur though it is uh, uh, directly responsible for formation of amino acid and amino acid is converted into a long chain of amino acid and finally it is producing oil vital for the formation of amino acids helps in improving a winter hardiness so uh, if there is a uh, i think uh, i don't know whether uh, nigeria is experiencing some some winter or not but in india we do so sulfur is used as an spray for avoiding this um, cold or a chilling injury so the next element is a boron the most important part of boron is for for fruit or seed setting because boron is a, as element 
which is required for pollen tube germination. So pollen tube germination means there is a pollen and there is something like a stigma. So the moment pollen comes on a stigma, so from a stigma, there is a one pollen tube form which reaches to a ovary and if this process is abstract because of a, a boron deficiency, then the seed setting or a fruit setting is going to be seriously impacted. So if there is chaffy grain or maybe less fruiting, you have to check whether the boron availability is uh, sufficient or not. Then copper, again, like zinc is catalyzed as uh, this enzyme and activities of a plant. Uh, copper also plays the major role uh, in, in activating the enzymatic activities and processes. It helps in a photosynthesis and reproductive stage and it increases sugar content. So if we talk about the, the sweetness, so copper is directly linked with, with uh, uh, sweetness. And one thing I've just uh, missed for a potash, the potash helps in ensuring a quality of your fruit or a produce, the shining, the lush on, on the, uh, the fruit, that comes from, from uh, potassium. <clears throat> Molybdenum is required for all those pulses because molybdenum is a one uh, element which is required for, for uh, nitrogen fixation and it's in a formation of a legume nodules needed to convert inorganic phosphate to organic form. So uh, now this is somehow close to my, my heart, the deficiency and disorder. Uh, I, I really consider this is, this is really uh, required to understand in in, in depth and use that for giving a solution to farmer because most of the farmers, they are not aware. So the first step for, for providing the solution for these deficiency or a disorder. So it is a very much important to rightly identify the root cause of problem. So for that, if there is a, any deficiency or disorder, as I mentioned in a hidden hunger concept that you need to avoid that this stage should reach but if if these deficiency symptoms appears then you have to identify in a right way that which is the nutrient deficient so for that you need to have a two you need to have a knowledge uh, of uh, two things the location of nutrient deficiency appear on the plant and the second the kind of a deficiency symptom so if we talk about this, the location. So as I mentioned, this calcium boron is the laziest element or essential element inside the plant after absorption by the root. Calcium boron are the two nutrients which are the laziest, means the almost immobile. So after absorption, maybe it is reaching on a this stage or maybe this stage, so the plant is getting sufficient calcium boron in this part of the plant. So this is the part where the plant is struggling to get a sufficient calcium boron. Why? Because they are the laziest one and their mobility inside the plant is least. So if any symptom appearing on the apical bud, then you have to link, ah, if it is in our to apical bud of my plant, the crop, then maybe it is calcium or maybe it is boron. So the moment farmer complains you that I'm getting some symptom on my plant, this may be because of a nutrient deficiency. So you have to first ask which part of your plant is getting that symptom. So like, Calcium boron, if it is an apical part, then it is because of calcium boron. If it is new leaf, so it is maybe sulfur, calcium, iron, or manganese. And if it, it is something kind of a, not only on an old leaf, the symptom is maybe on a middle leaf, so then it is the possibility of deficiency is zinc. And if it is on an older leaf, so it is either nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, or molybdenum. So 
the moment there is any deficiency symptom so as a clever agronomist or a clever technical guy you need to first see the location of your deficiency symptoms and this chart be with you all the time that if it is here then this if it is here then this if it is here then this and if it is here then this is the new trend. and if you forget anything then you just recall your mobility inside the plant chart so simple calcium boron is immobile and npk mg and mo is highly mobile so those who are highly mobile deficiency symptom on a lower leaf those who are immobile the deficiency symptom on an apical bar so this is how you identify a deficiency symptom and location of deficiency symptoms let's move to deficiency symptom so if i categorize the deficiency symptom after the location we have only four type of deficiency symptoms one is dead spot another is no dead spot then it's a green vein or yellow vein if it is a yellow vein means it's a complete chlorosis if it is a green vein green vein it's mean intervenal chlorosis so these are the only four symptoms you need to recognize for identification of any deficiency symptoms then the life once you know this then life become a little difficult so dead spot we are getting because of a potassium also because of a molybdenum also so what is the difference in in, in these two different uh, nutrients so you need to be a capable enough identifying that oh dead spot this kind then it is maybe because of a potassium oh dead spot because of this then it is molybdenum similarly no dead spot again again if certain uh, kind of a symptom is there then it may be because of n and if this is this 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 so you need to be able to understand what is the difference between this magnesium green vein versus iron mean green vein versus mn green vein so let's understand first dead spot dead spot if we talk about this deficiency symptom so uh, we we seen it is because of potassium and molybdenum but what is the difference in case of potassium yellowing is start from a leaf tip or margin so always yellowing will start either from the margin or from the tip okay and yellowing will extend from margin towards the center of, of the leaf yellow spot become a necrotic means something like first the plant symptom it will start giving a symptom of a yellow leaf at the margin and then that margin will become a dead spot but after the dead spot there will be yellowing and after that there will be a green patch also so there will be a three different sections so this is something a uh, sharp difference between a green yellow and necrotic necrotic means the dead portion dead spots appear on the margin of the leaf okay so these are the potassium symptoms and if the intervenal translucent spot of irregularity what we are saying here it is very very sharp difference between a green so it is it means uniformly the complete tip or a margin is yellowing and then it is becoming a necrotic but in case of a molybdenum intervenal translucent spot or irregular shape there is no certain shape spots are a light green yellow or brown so there are so the color of uh, spots because first is irregular shape and anywhere on the leaf then the second is light green yellow or brown color and in some cases it exudes resin gum so there will be a some gummy kind of a substance which is coming out from the lower leaf so these are the how you can differentiate between the deficiency symptom of potassium and molybdenum which is having a deficiency means the symptom of a dead spot so this picture will clear give you a clear idea that how it is it looks like see if we talk about this potassium you can see the site or a margin is having a dead spots and then there is a chlorosis yellow spots and then it is 
green spot. But if we talk about this molybdenum symptom, you can see irregular spots all across the leaf. And these, uh, these spots will gradually become a dead spots. So these are something deficiency symptom of dead spots of potassium and molybdenum. You can clearly differentiate. I'll request you guys, whenever you go uh, on a field trip, you try to see these type of uh, symptoms and try to uh, brush up your, your uh, learning. So maybe what I request from all of you that you may uh, click some of the good pictures wherever you go and uh, get these type of uh, apparent symptoms and share on the group. So next is the intervenal chlorosis. What is intervenal chlorosis? What is vein? So if you see the leaf, there are like, like we have a vein, our, our arteries and veins we have. Similarly, the plant leaf also have the veins. So intervenal chlorosis means chlorosis is in between those veins. So veins are remain green, but there is a chlorosis of lamina. So iron only primary veins green. So primary vein and secondary veins means the thicker kind of a vein is a primary vein and those coming out of those thicker veins on the leaf is a secondary vein. So in case of a iron, so the symptom is green veins or intervenal chlorosis so and this, this symptom appears for iron as well as manganese both so in case of iron if you want to differentiate between these two then in case of iron only primary veins are green <coughs> and in extreme case the leaf become a white so whiteness is is somehow in extreme case the iron deficient leaf is going to become a whitish, but in case of a manganese, primary and secondary vein remain green. So intervenal chlorosis, but primary and secondary, both the veins will remain green. Leaf never become a white. The extreme case dead spots may appear and then checkered appearance of the leaf means something like a check, uh, small check kind of a complete uh, uh, texture of a leaf is going to happen. So if you see, this is the case. So if we see what we discuss, we discuss that only primary veins green in case of iron. So let's see iron only primary, the major veins are green. Okay. You see the major veins are only the major veins are green. But if you see here, the major as well as most of the secondary veins are also green in case of a manganese. So this is the symptom for both iron and manganese. Manganese is MN. Both the symptoms are intervenal chlorosis, but in case of iron, only primary veins are going to be remain green. But in case of a manganese, it is going to be both. The primary and secondary veins will remain green. So uh, then again, the complete chlorosis. So it's mean the leaf lamina as well as vein, both become a green. So if we talk about the nitrogen, uh, it is a uniform color chlorosis, leaf become a stiff and erect, especially in cereals. And leaf detach easily in case of a dicotyledonous leaf. Uh, as I mentioned, the nitrogen deficiency always appears on the lower side. So if you, you uh, you have a something soybean plant and it is showing a deficiency it means chlorosis the leaf is becoming yellow then the moment you will touch that leaf you may get that leaf detached from the plant so uh, in in case of a cereals it shows a v-shaped appearance v-shaped yellowing means something it will go this way so sulfur, uniform chlorosis, but the difference is nitrogen is always on a lower side. Sulfur is on something new leaf. So first difference between nitrogen and sulfur is the lower leaf, the deficiency symptom is nitrogen. If it is a, a new, relatively new leaf, so deficiency symptom is sulfur. And then small leaf with the pale, pale veins. So it is the color of that uh, vein is lighter. No easy leaf detachment in case of sulfur because it says 
not the nitrogen deficiency. Copper uniform chlorosis tending towards whiteness. So whiteness is coming again in, in iron as well as in copper. In extreme case, leaf lose luster. You know, luster is a shining. So if, if there is something like a copper deficiency, so the shining from the leaf will disappear. And leaf become a welted and leaf detached due to water soaked condition. So in this copper case also, it will detach, but it is not because of that nitrogen, it is because of the water soaked condition. So if we see, these are the something uh, nitrogen deficiency initially, this uh, middle stage this way and the later stage it is going to be a something. If you talk about, if you see, this is the V-shaped kind of a thing. This is the V-shaped kind of a <coughs> sulfur. If you talk about, you can see the pale uh, green color of uh, intervenal veins and this is copper deficiency. Then I need to go back. So now the calcium and boron, if you recall, these are the something deficiency symptom which is going to appear on the apical bud. So bud leaf become a chlorotic white with base remain green. In the case of a calcium deficiency, the bud, the base will remain green, but in case of a boron, the become a chlorosis will start from the base. So that's the major difference, okay? The calcium, Base, bud base will remain green, but the boron, the, the uh, chlorosis will start from the base. And then one third chlority portion of a tip hooked downwards and become brittle. So it is going to be this way. So calcium deficiency. Dead of terminal bud in extreme case. If the deficiency of a calcium uh, goes in extreme, then there is a chances that apical bud will die. Bud tip become elongated. Whip tail, whip whip like it's a it's elongated kind of a shape <coughs> structure is going to happen. So that is the deficiency of boron. Bud become a brownish and blackish dead of terminal bud. In this both cases, the dead of terminal bud is the extreme case of deficiency. So this is in the bud. Now I'm going to show you the pictures of deficiency symptom of calcium and boron on the fruit. I think you guys have seen many times this kind of a, a deficiency symptom on tomato crop. So this is because of the calcium and this type of symptom on, on tomato is because of the boron and in cauliflower this type of symptom is because of the boron. So now uh, an assignment for, for you guys. So a grower is observing following in his crop. Field one, yellowing on a lower leaves. Some of the lower leaves are having uniform dead spot. And the field two is yellowing of a new leaf and leaf not detaching easily. Some of the leaves are becoming white. So you have to identify what is the deficiency symptom in field one and field two. We will discuss that during our uh, question answer session. So next is, synthesis of natural source of plant nutrient. So what is fertilizer? Synthetic or natural source of plant nutrient is known as fertilizer and fertilizer is of three different kinds. The synthetic fertilizer I'm talking about, the straight, complex and mixed fertilizer. These are the three categories of a fertilizer. Mixed is whatever the NPK ratios. The complex is more than one nutrient of a primary uh, primary nutrient but a straight fertilizer is only one nutrient of uh, primary primary nutrient. The straight fertilizer are those which supply only one primary plant nutrient namely nitrogen, phosphorus or anything. So so this, this already you have so I'm just going to skip this. The next is I uh, am I think I'm running a little late. So this is one thing which you can use for advising your for, uh, grower that if he is going to apply fertilizer which fertilizer he can mix i don't know how many fertilizers kind of fertilizer available in an igdn market but this chart you can use like potassium sulfate you should not never mix with ammonium sulfate this this is restricted so availability of that fertilizer particular fertilizer is going to be uh, uh, something like efficiency is going to reduce further but the most 
notorious uh, fertilizer is calcium nitrate so whenever any fertilizer any any grower is going to use a calcium fertilizer calcium nitrate i don't know whether it is available in your market or not but if it is available then you have to check this this complete thing because most of the cases this calcium is not gelling with other so it is mostly incompatible so this chart is given to you you can use whenever you 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 want to recommend uh, any farmer that uh, while applying he can mix these two fertilizers so wherever it is stick uh, you the, he can mix those fertilizer together and apply wherever it is restricted yes he can mix but he is not going to get the the desired result where it is cross he should not mix those fertilizer because it is seriously going to impact the effectiveness of fertilizer so this is another thing which impact uh, somehow the fertilizer availability so this is a chart of uh, i don't know P, you people know the ph ph is uh, the indication of acidity and alkalinity so above 7 it is alkaline solid soil <clears throat> below 7 it is a acidic soil but <clears throat> you need to measure if you have a some very very simple thing for measuring the ph then your ph the availability of nutrient is best between 6.2 to 7.3 ph and try to maintain maybe 6.5 to 7 if it is possible because soil amendment is really difficult but it is a much easier in a hydroponic that's how this i'm just something showing so but if there is any deficiency despite of applying a uh, sufficient quantity of fertilizer and all like npk it is always if the soil is acidic then the availability of these nutrients are always in challenge and if this is something like a higher then iron and manganese is always going to be deficient so this chart you can use after measuring the soil ph you can get an idea that what is something like uh, hindering for availability of a plant nutrient this is another uh, <coughs> table which you can use i'll let you know how to use this table antagonistic impact means if <clears throat> nitrogen is in excess in your soil then <clears throat> it is going to impact the availability of potassium and calcium similarly if zinc is in a higher quantity then it is going to impact the availability of iron and manganese if zinc is a higher then despite the iron and manganese is available in your soil its availability is going to be lower so <clears throat> this information you can use once you you have a something soil analysis data then you can use this information for recommending and identification of the problem <clears throat> so fertilizer quantity <coughs> estimation so a farmer requested to estimate his fertilizer requirement based on the nutrient recommendation you know this is a question from him <coughs> ki bhai the farmer is saying that i got a recommendation that you i need to apply 120 kg of a nitrogen uh <coughs> 60 kg of a phosphorus 45 so this way he is getting that information from somehow research institution or from uh, academic institution that for getting a good productivity of your crop this much of the fertilizer nutrient you need to <coughs> apply but yeah this is in a nutrient form how to convert that into a fertilizer form so for that you need to understand what are the available fertilizers and what is the re nutrient recommendation which you, which already mentioned here fertilizer nutrient content of each fertilizer whatever you are doing what is the crop and type of soil because type of soil is also crucial for for uh, identification or uh, selecting your fertilizer for that particular area so one way is something you estimate each and every and do all those calculation but here i have already share the sheet you have to give a try and maybe you have to share that that information so suppose you need to uh, start with you need to start main, uh, maintaining that phosphorus 60 kg phosphorus you need to supply 60 kg phosphorus okay so you need to supply how much quantity how much kg of uh, dap diammonium phosphate it is somehow 
46 kg. So you need to increase further. 120. So it is 55. 130. 30. So yeah. So the moment you will apply 130 kg of uh, uh, DAP, it is going to supply you 60 kg of uh, phosphorus. Similar way, you can do your calculation <coughs> by changing. Rest everything is a formula driven. For getting that fertilizer recommendation, you need to alter available fertilizer and based on that, you can get the desired result, okay? And <clears throat> for getting the summary, you can see here the nitrogen so far by DAP, we are supplying 23 uh, kgs of our nitrogen and 60 kg of a phosphate. And I also have put in this 80 kg of our calcium. So calcium, we are getting 12%. Uh, sorry, 15% and the calcium 12%, 12 kgs. So this way you have to do this exercise and submit your exercise, maybe via mail or I think uh, the mail would be better way. So coming back to your presentation. So this exercise you need to do. One exercise is about that uh, uh, identification of deficiency symptoms. Second is the fertilizer recommendation estimation of your fertilizer. Then uh, here comes your urea, what we were talking about. Urea is somehow, the urea formula is CO2 and two particles of NH2 is attached with you, uh, CO2 and this is the formula for urea and urea is amide fertilizer and the moment you apply your granular uh, urea in soil in the presence of urease enzyme it will convert into ammonia NH3 and NH3 is uh, unstable so um, immediately with hydrogen it will convert into ammonium and ammonium is a stable uh, nutrient and it is available for for a crop in some of these rice and other crops the water loving crops they can absorb this ammonia and then ammonia in presence of a nitrosomonas bacteria uh, it co <coughs> convert into nitrite which is again unstable but yes it is a toxic too so if the excess of this, this uh, nitrite is in soil, there will be a chances that it will kill your, uh, your, your uh, plant. But yeah, the availability of these microorganisms, nitrosomonas and nitrobacter is uh, sufficient. So this conversion is a very fast and nitrite, nitrate is available for the plant growth and <clears throat> the plant absorbs. So this is hydrolysis of urea the moment you you apply your urea it uh, the process is it starts from amide amide to ammonium ammonium to ammonia ammonia to ammonium and nitrate and then nitrite to nitrate so this is the process and <clears throat> one more thing uh, if we apply this urea so Initially, around the urea granule, there is a high pH, alkalinity is there. So that is because of these two processes. Initially, this is, in, in normal, this urea is an acid fertilizer, but in, in initial stage of your, your hydrolysis, it produces alkaline nature. So next is urea. And the question is why urea have a 46% nitrogen? We know uh, all that yeah, urea is 46% nitrogen. But why? That's the question I am leaving with you guys. You have to find out the answer for this question and then we'll discuss. So that's all from my side. Now everybody can demute yourself and one by one you can, you can ask the question. Yeah, who is the first guy who is going to ask the question? Yeah, good morning, sir. Good morning. I am Lawal Abdurrahman Adebo Ali, the agronomist in uh, Kwara State of to be precise, sir. Yeah. Uh, my question is that when studying the, the deficiency symptom of nutrients in plants, you know, in Nigeria, we don't have all these uh, uh, uncommon fertilizers available. For instance, now, if you have a uh, boron or molybdenum that is deficient in the plant, so how do we uh, supplement for this deficiency? The absence of the so-called fertilizers so that's my question yeah so so uh your question is related to the policy 
because that that need to be because if nothing is available then how can you go for that so the only source is you can uh, uh, ensure the application of an organic manure because organic fertilizer they contain all these micronutrients so if you talk about uh, this fertilizer uh, in in form of a molybdenum and other other uh, element so that is the policy decision of your government so we need to if there is a specific deficiency you need to contact the government and uh, put put your your something recommendation or you can ask those those uh, government authority that this is the particular nutrient which is deficient because of that the productivity is going down so uh, there is a need need to change our policy all right thank you sir yeah who's the next hello sir yeah yeah i am musa yohana medugu you can switch on your camera so i can see you okay um the question is my name is shala agronomist from undo state sir. yeah so um in some of the local villages like one of our agronomists rightly said now sir when there is a particular shot of the nutrient for example like the monibnum that you made example of and then it is not in the visibility of us getting any of such fertilizer within our region. Is there a way we can supplement a particular nutrient for that one missing? Yeah, see, that is that is an area uh, we, we should see that as an, as an opportunity and, and push the government policy for, for uh, bringing these kind of a fertilizer. So one thing is uh, bringing that fertilizer in your country, but another thing is that uh, the farmer need to be something like capable enough affording these fertilizers. So yeah, that is something kind of a, a opportunity we, we can see. Uh, maybe we can we can think on that line internally also, we'll discuss with the management, maybe we can think for, for uh, coordinating with some other company or maybe we can come up with some, some uh, new product. Okay, sir, thank you, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah, hello, Emmanuel. Yeah. Uh, my name is Emmanuel. Yeah. Um, marketing executive from my question is uh, con uh based on your presentation sir yeah in the course of your presentation i don't know if i was the one that didn't get you well uh mm -hmm. when you were uh, describing the immobile uh, nutrients mm -hmm. you made mention of uh, phosphate and zinc as mm -hmm. a very lazy as very lazy um, nutrients mm -hmm. and uh your recommendation was that a basal, a basal application should be always in place uh, to that effect. So I want to understand, uh, are they really uh, lazy as you uh, term them? Because um, you also said uh, something like uh, calcium and boron are also immobile and lazy. Yep. See, uh, you miss, I, I got your email, well, I got your, your question. So somehow there is uh, two types of uh, mobility. One mobility in soil, okay? The one I'm talking about, the phosphorus and zinc, that is immobile in soil. So means the moment you apply your fertilizer in soil, then the mobility of that phosphate inside the soil means the, 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 the chemical, that phosphate, say for example, this is your, your uh, soil and if the particle of phosphate is here it, and the root is here, this particle will never move to the root inside the soil. So one mobility is inside the soil, another mobility calcium and boron inside the plant. So after absorption by the root, because what is the normal process? Once you apply your fertilizer, that become a solution farm and the solution, nutrient solution is being absorbed by, by the crop, by the root. So after absorption, the mobility of calcium boron inside the plant is least. Are you getting? There are two types of mobility, one mobility, in soil and the mobility inside the plant body. I understand you, sir. Got it? Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, Emil. Yeah, uh, Zayad. Hello, sir. 
يا موسى يا سامي هلا ويت موسى ليت جياد جو اهيد اوكي جود داي ايفري ون ماي كويشن جوز دوس از ذير از ذير ا تشات فور ذا كاربون نيتروجين ريشيو فور اول كروبس كاربون نيتروجين ريشيو See, basically, carbon-nitrogen ratio, or the the point I just something discussed with you guys, is in relation to uh, uh, fruit crops. But yes, it is present in all the crops. Even if if a grain crop and you apply nitrogen at the time of a flowering and all, then there will be a excess vegetative growth and there will be a less fruit bearing. that is also possible in the grain crop but its impact is much more visible in case of fruit crops like mangoes like guavas like oranges so there the role of this cn ratio is much apparent and visible thank you sir okay yeah yes, thank you thank you yeah musha go ahead okay sir thank you you switch on your camera uh, so we can see Yeah, you, you have to di you disable me. I cannot. You cannot see me too. Okay, can. ask to start video. Okay, start. You can. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, based on your question uh, on uh, your teaching, you made mention of law of uh, minimum. Yeah. And you said uh, deficiency in one nutrient. Yep. Will affect the yield of a crop. what if the nutrient is immobile will it still affect the yield of the crop see uh if i talk about that law of minimum so yes. law of minimum is considering the ideal availability of that particular nutrients okay so these two things are in different these two things are absolutely different the mobility of nutrient is a different concept the law of minimum concept law of minimum is after considering that all the nutrient mobility and everything in 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 consideration then only we are reaching on a law of minimal and maybe because of the mobility if that mobile immobile nutrient in soil is not available for that plant that element may become the the factor for deciding your uh, productivity but yeah these two concepts are different okay okay yeah. thank you so, welcome who is the next and if somebody is not able to demute so i somehow i mute the guy so they can ask hello sir yeah yeah mohammad yakub abdullah the north central zone switch on your your camera so we all can see you yeah go ahead now can you see me yes yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, looking at the availability of the, uh, this nutrient, this particular, you made mention from the presentation. You made mention of a pH range of six point two to seven point three. Yeah. But one can take it from six point five, maybe to seven point. What is the practical implication if the pH is neutral, considering the soil color to be either negative or positive? see if if the soil ph is a neutral then that is the best for for your availability of the plant nutrient any extreme of acidity or extreme of alkalinity is going to impact your availability of nutrient if it is uh, something like uh, neutral then there is nothing like uh, nothing to worry i think that's the question yes thank you yep So who is next? I am. I am Dayur Umar. Yeah, Dayur. 
Good day. Good day, everyone. Okay. I am Dair Omar from Bauchi. I am Dair Omar from Bauchi. Okay. Just give Sir, me give me a one. Uh, I would like to appreciate your effort for organizing this very important training. The question is, uh, I need to know more about how to assess fertilizer use efficiency. Sir, is there any tool that is that can be used to assess the fertilizer use efficiency, or we are just use uh, our practical or normal experience to assess it? See, there are different tools, techniques to assess the fertilizer use efficiency, but it is a little complicated. The only, only, and I don't see like you, you require, really require to, to go up to that level to assess the fertilizer use efficiency because that is a too technical for you guys. Your effort should be how to ensure better fertilizer use efficiency. What are those factors you, you, you manage well for ensuring the better fertilizer use efficiency. So that's that's the one thing you need to uh, focus on. Instead of focusing on uh, how to measure the fertilizer efficiency. Okay. So thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello, doctor. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. Yes, ah, uh, I'm an agronomist mm -hmm. from Kano here. Yeah. Uh, we have been. In the field for quite some time, yeah, and most of our farmers usually. Are you, can you hear me loud? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, most of our farmers now are, are constrained by some okay. of the elements that are lacking. Okay. Uh, in our, our available fertilizer in Nigeria. Mm. Just like the earlier. Uh, agronomy uh, highlighted that there are elements that are not readily found in uh, the package, uh, uh, fertilizer. Now, I'm uh, farmers, aside from the farmers, uh, uh, have been for, for a long time now, they have been using uh, organic materials and they, they st keep on using it up till now. So, at what uh, ratio uh, come uh, merge the two, the synthetic chemicals, materials that we use, those are our normal urea package and MPKs with the organic materials that are being hipped in the farm during and prior to the farming period. Yeah, I got Mukta, now I got your question, okay. Uh, There is no certain ratio of uh, somehow what should be the ratio of a synthetic as well as uh, organic fertilizer ratio. So there is no certain is, means uh, uh, established ratio, okay? But having said that, if farmer can afford to use highest quantity or required quantity for organic matter every year because you, you your your country is a is a temperate zone sorry uh, tropical tropical zone with a high temperature so so organic matter decomposition process is is faster so if farmer can afford to put the recommended quantity of organic matter every with every crop then there is no use of a synthetic fertilizer, okay? Why we need a synthetic fertilizer? We need to understand why there is a need of a synthetic fertilizer. We uh, need that synthetic fertilizer because this process of supplying nutrient from the organic fertilizer is pretty slow. And the total nutrient availability at a certain point of a time is always not as per the requirement of crop. So because of that, there is a need of a synthetic fertilizer, which are means something kind of a product where these nutrients are quickly available for your plant. So it is kind of a, a meeting requirement of your crop by giving a nutrient means fertilizer, which is quickly available. So there is no certain ratio, but yes, definitely, if farmer can afford 
to put organic matter every year as per the re recommendation there is a no use of a using synthetic fertilizer but that is now becoming impossible for using that much quantity of uh, organic fertilizer that's how the solution is synthetic fertilizer which provide quick nutrient to your your crop so musa has asked, asked a question which form of a phosphate and potassium is absorbed potassium is always uh, k2o phosphate is uh, i think i have already given in a presentation also you somehow missed that so phosphate is h2o uh, h2po4 and hpo4 these are the forms ionic form of uh, potassium and uh, phosphate which is available for plant absorption Okay, any more question? Hey, Balbir. Yes, please, yes. Yeah, you want to share something with uh, all of the participants? Yeah, fine, and uh, that's uh, good. The people participated very well. They asked the questions, and now our team is uh, more educated when it comes to the plant nutrition. That's good. Team, anything you want to say, you can ask. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah, to do. Yeah, you do. Can you switch on your camera? If you are facing difficulty, you can go ahead without switching on your camera. Go ahead, yeah. Kubu. Okay. Uh, I think in the absence of questions, uh, we can attend to some of the questions you raised in the group so that we all benefit from. From okay so have you yes, done your uh, question like one of the question why is urea 46 percent yeah uh from from my simple calculation here is all going towards the molar mass and the percentage by mass of nitrogen in the compound nitrogen is having a molar mass of 14. okay so uh by weight, if you add all the elements together, we have nitrogen 14, we have hydrogen 2, carbon is having a molar mass of 12, oxygen is having 18, yep. then nitrogen again is having 14, hydrogen yep. 2. If you add yep. everything together, you have 62, I think. 60, 60.06. 60 60.06. Yeah. Yes. So, and um, taking nitrogen now, taking the percentage. Are we together? Yeah, go ahead. Take, taking, taking the percentage by mass of nitrogen, we have two nitrogen here, it having, that's 28. 14 plus 14, making 28. Yep. So, 28 divided by 60 times 100 will give you 46. Mm, that's great. That's great. That's great. Let me let me share the screen and these guys can see. So let me share the screen and you all can see that what he is sharing. Okay. So what he's sharing is already uh, absolutely right. Then I need to this one share. If it is not helping me out, so I need to put you guys in. Okay. Okay. So this is this, and this this. This is the thing he's talking about. Okay. So N12, H16, sorry, C12, O16, N14, and H1.08, all make 60.06. .06. And this 14 multiplied by 2 is 28. If you divide 28 by 60, it's a simple ratio. 
28 by 60 and multiply by 100, it is coming 46.6 something. So that's the way, this is 46. So we cannot increase beyond 46% urea, nor we can uh, bring it down if it is only urea. By coating, definitely we can bring it down. So that's great. Who has answered this? Who has given this answer? That's great. That's great. I think everybody knows that now uh, and knows that how this 46 is in urea. That's great. Any more question? Hey, SK, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Read. Yeah. So you want to say something with your, your team and group? Uh, basically, yeah. Uh, it was a good. You can good switch program. on. Good. You can switch on your camera. Sure. I've sure. given you the permission. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. So it's a really good session, and uh, I think everybody must have enjoyed this session. And uh, the thing is that uh, it is a uh, very technical, uh, technical session, and uh, a basic nutrition concept, and that. Because you know the role that explained also in your presentation, role of agronomist is very wide, very wide. There is expectation from the customer, expectation from the neighbor, expectation from the company. So it means all the agronomists must be equipped, well equipped with the knowledge. And the, yeah. the, the, this, the concept and all these things you have shown in your presentation is very much required. This is a basic concept. Without having the knowledge of all these concepts and all these knowledge, going in the field and talking to the farmer, talking to the customer is nothing. So it is, it is, uh, it is very much important for all agronomists and the marketing executives. They should have the complete knowledge when they are visiting to the field when they are talking to the customer. So I request all agronomists to go through this presentation again and again. They all, it should be learned. It should be, they should keep all these things in their mind. So it is not, uh, it's not very easy in this. In fact, if you uh, go through it, repeat and repeat many times, you will learn it. And there are so many things like the rules, rules of all new and Here, what is the problem is in the Nigeria, because in uh, Nigeria, the farmers are not aware and there are very limited kind of product is available. Only the urea where the nitrogen is there. And uh, this uh, NPK, this uh, blended NPK, that is NPK, nitrogen phosphorus portal. There is no any micronutrient, there is no other product. So that's why that also limits their knowledge. They are not thinking about the zinc, they are not thinking about the boron, the calcium, manganese, iron, they're not talking about all these things. But the time will come, the time will come. And when this, even if we have deficiency system, symptom in the field, in the different crops, they are not able to understand it, they are not bothered about it. They will not know the farmers, know the, uh, the, the agriculture, know the government. So now it's it's very good opportunity for us that to go in the deep to understand better uh, practical knowledge with the farmers. And you also mentioned that whenever you feel a, you see any symptoms in the crops, you should they, they can see the picture, they can share it within the group, identify the what is that symptoms. Basically, when the farmers realize that this is really requirement. It's coming that suppose there is deficiency in boron, but there is no boron fertilizer here, like zinc. Zinc is, if you talk about in, in the India, after nitrogen, phosphorus, potash means the urea, DAP, and potash. The next is the zinc, zinc uh, fertilizer, zinc sulfate, but here there is no, there is no any product like this. So it's it's good opportunity and good that uh, we need to learn and uh, we need to understand and try to uh, after this training. Try to put these your knowledge in the field, and try to that farmers should adopt it. Otherwise, keeping knowledge within some there is no meaning. So try to I I would request all the agronomists and marketing people they they should understand. They should uh, try to is to his knowledge. Try to explain to the farmers. Try to make them aware, because what is the problem in the Nigeria that uh, fertilizer consumption as a whole is very very less. So when we'll put these knowledge in the field, definitely they are going to uh, 
use more fertilizer, more number of bags. So ultimately, the farm, this the market size will increase, and it is win-win situation for the uh, farmers, the retailers, the company. So they should utilize. I think that knowledge. knowledge is very good, and it they should should work seriously, and uh, they try to apply uh, the these knowledge in the field. That is very much important. So I think it is it is it is very good. It was very good session, and uh, I should say thanks to Praveen that he has. In fact, I think you have taken uh, one one hour forty minutes with your presentation. That's big presentation. I have explained each and every slide thoroughly. That is very important because yep. just touching touching those points is not important. I think uh, what we can do, we can repeat such kind of presentation again and again. Yep. Maybe some some addition addition. So and you have explained each and every because I was level throughout your presentation. So each and every point you have explained very well. I think it is good. It's very good. Thank you, Praveen. Thank you, and all our uh, good army marketing spirit. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, SK. Uh, I think Avijit is also here. Avijit, you like to say something? Avijit is yeah. He was there. I have seen his name. Rishi has just left because he has another call with the customer, yeah. so he has just left. But seen Avijit here. Yeah. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. It has been a very nice session by Mr. Praveen. Uh, uh, quite a detailed one, but the most important part of it would be uh, on the application side. Whatever knowledge you have gained out of these presentations, uh, training sessions, uh, how well you are able to apply this uh, knowledge at the, in the field. Uh, the lab to land concept has to be implemented very well. Uh, that would guide the farmers in the right way to do the farming so that they are benefited by the use of our products at present it is only urea so the value addition should be there uh, and in that perspective like uh, i think yakubu is there are you there yakubu uh, the zonal agronomist for north central yes sir yeah thank you so see uh, uh, while i was going through uh, dr sabin presentation today uh, one thing was i was constantly thinking about was what had happened in, with the ginger farmers and with the potato farmers in Plateau State. And you are very much part of that discussion that we had with the farmers and with the agronomists, where uh, the farmers claim that they got a better results out of only application of urea than when they were applying NPK at a much higher dosage uh, than urea. So in that kind of uh, scenario, uh, it's it's quite a confusion uh, kind of a scenario because due to high prices of NPK compound fertilizers, the farmers are now avoiding the use of NPK. Uh, comparatively, urea is much cheaper in Nigeria at present time. So the ginger farmers and the potato farmers who were earlier using a higher dose of NPK now have totally moved away from NPK and they are relying on urea now. Uh, still, they claim that they are having a better yield and a better crop quality. So, uh, how we can explain that? So, uh, these are the things we should always question ourselves, yeah. get more data points to see where, whether they are correct in their assessment or something is going, going wrong somewhere. So, uh, the, the knowledge we gain through this presentation, we should apply in the field and always look for correct answers. So, like why this is happening or is it at all happening or it's a psychological effect the farmers are having because they are spending less so they are thinking that getting more out of spending less so these are the th uh, things where we should uh, apply our knowledge and see uh, whether the assessment of the farmers is correct or they need to they need a correction in that because a prolonged use of urea in those tuber crops may ultimately lower the yield over a period of time. Yes. Maybe the soil is quite high in P and K content right now because of prolonged use of P and K fertilizers over almost so many years. Yeah. And now there may be a couple of seasons, even if they don't use P and K, and they increase the application of, of urea, they might get a better yield for so, few I, 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 but ultimately it may reduce.
I absolutely agree with Avijit's point. The, what is happening? Phosphorus is most notorious element. And uh, most of the cases, phosphorus is fixed. And potassium is also uh, get fixed in the clay particle. So it is stored in your soil and is gradually becoming available. So the, the uh, uh, rarest or a minimum is gone, that nitrogen. So he's putting a urea and getting a better result. So, so that's, that's the correlation. And uh, out of the soil test we have conducted over the uh, last two and a half years, uh, almost 90% of the Nigerian soil are either very low or low uh, in nitrogen content compared to medium and high in potash. So there is uh, total uh, the NPK ratio uh, is tilted uh, higher towards PNK and lower towards nitrogen. So maybe higher nitrogen uh, application is giving them a better yield yeah. using the type of minimum. Yep, that's 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 the that's a uh, relation. Uh, what I'll, I'll suggest so, maybe uh, all the agronomists should use that uh, law of minimal the barrel and they can use that paper bag and demonstrate that to their farmer for educating them to use the balanced fertilizer and make a small video and share with us okay so thank you thank you mr Prabhupada. that's great thank you to all of you always your queries are welcome whenever you want you can uh, Share your queries maybe on the group or maybe personally to me. So thank you all for uh, giving something, uh, this, this making this learning session uh, fruitful. And I'm expecting that you are going to use this knowledge for ensuring efficient delivery of your uh, uh, roles and responsibility. So thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Take hey, care. Rishi. Yeah, hello. Rishi, yeah, Rishi. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was, I was, I just went out. I got a call actually. Okay, I just, uh, yeah, I mentioned. I think. Uh, go yeah, ahead. yeah. So just I wait a moment. You. Rishi want to share something to all of you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it was, it was good session. It was a good session. A good beginning from uh, Praveen. So definitely, uh, we are going to learn a lot of things. We already, uh, most of the economists know a lot of things, but you know, we need to do it in a fine-tuned way and to refine way. So that, uh, as you said, and whatever the uh, farmer want to know, we should tell them. Uh, instead of uh, telling so much grammar here and there, you know, just to the point, crisp, and the correct information, we should tell the farmers. And it will definitely have, uh, going to help our retailers and uh, uh, agro dealers, and overall uh, achieving the goals of the company. So it's good. So I missed some part. Uh, I missed some part. I will try to um, join in the second training on the last session. Yeah. It is uh, it's okay for me. Thanks, Praveen. No issue. No issue. Thanks, SKG. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All the best. Thank you. Yeah. yeah okay. Thanks. Bye.